Hi everyone, it's Health Science with Heidi. Today we're gonna to talk about the lungs and do an at-home experiment to test how much air your lungs can hold. So this is the general anatomy of the lungs. We're looking at it like it's a person standing across from us. So this one's the left lung, and then we have a right lung. And you can see how it's connected from your mouth and nose through the trachea and into the lungs. When we're talking about the lungs, it's often called the pulmonary system, which can also be known as the respiratory system. In health science, pulmonary is a word that refers to anything that has to do with the lungs. So in a later video, we're gonna learn about cardiac arrests and you'll hear about pulmonary veins, for example, in that video. That means the veins that go from the lungs back to the heart. Now, as this picture shows us, our lungs are separated into different sections, and these sections are referred to as lobes. On our right lung, we have three lobes, our superior, middle, and inferior. On our left lung, we have two lobes, superior and inferior. The reason we only have two on the left lungs is because of this little notch right here, this indent, where there's a section of the lung that's missing, basically from comparison to the right lung, and this is what we call the cardiac notch. And this space is cut out because it's where our heart sits. So you can imagine the heart sits right in that little space. And it takes up more room, and because our heart sits on the left side of our body, this is why our left lung only has two lobes. Now, as you can also see in this picture, there's what looks like roots or branches of trees going into the lungs, and these are called bronchi and we're gonna talk about these more. Now we breathe in air through our mouth and nose, and then it goes into a pipe or tunnel structure that's called a trachea. The trachea then splits into your left and right bronchi. And then these split into, well on the right lung, three bronchi, and then on the left two, and then they split into even smaller and smaller branches, like smaller branches on a tree. And with each branching off, the tubes get smaller and smaller and smaller until you can only see them under a really, really strong microscope that can look at things that are just cells big. And this is where we see the picture on the right, which is called our alveoli. And the alveoli are the smallest endpoints of these tree-like structures of the bronchi and they are kind of like these bundles of grapes. And the alveoli is where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged in the lungs. So between the air we breathe in and the air we breathe out, we want oxygen in and we want CO2 out. And this picture shows us what each of those little alveolar sacs, as we can call them, look like up close. There's air on the inside that we're breathing in and breathing out, and as we can see, we have these little blood vessels passing by and the air can actually diffuse across a really thin layer of tissue. And so when you hear someone talking about gas exchange in the lungs, you breathe in oxygen and you exhale CO2, that exchange is happening at this really microscopic level in the alveoli. Now, if you've taken chemistry before or you might take chemistry in the future, you see this periodic table a lot. And for me, I find it really interesting to just connect it to this because we see these elements on here and sometimes we don't think about how they actually play into our everyday lives. But this is a really simple one. Oxygen is two oxygen molecules and carbon dioxide that we breathe out is one carbon molecule and two oxygen molecules. Now, this is just for fun, but this is an X-ray of someone's chest and in an X-ray, Things that are really dense, like bones, show up as white, and things that are filled with air show up as dark. So the dark spaces in here are where our lungs are. So you can see your left lung, because again, we're looking at it like it's a person standing across from us, and then their right lung. And that shape in the middle that I'll outline right here, that's actually your heart. And you can see how it actually is a little bit centered but definitely on the left side of the lung, right where that cardiac notch is that we talked about earlier. Now, while breathing in and out might not be something we think about 
all the time. It requires a lot of muscles to actually do that. And this diagram is showing us some of those in different layers. And it's really interesting how something that we don't have to consciously think about, our bodies are doing such complex work. Now, we might know that when we breathe air in, we can call that inhaling. And when we breathe air out, we can also call that exhaling. Breathing air in, inhaling, takes a lot more muscles than exhaling does. Okay, so now for the really fun part, we're gonna do an at-home experiment where you can test your own lung capacity. So how much air your lungs can actually hold. And there's a lot of different factors that can determine this. And those are all in the document that are linked in the description, which also has all of the tools you can use and the instructions for this. And I encourage you to try and guess ahead of time what your general lung capacity might be. But particularly if you have others in your household that you can also do this with, see if you can test who might have the largest lung capacity and then have everyone do the experiment and see if you were right. I had a lot of fun doing this on my own and doing this with my roommates, so I hope you guys also have fun. So you'll wanna find a jug, a gallon jug might work best for this. Uh, the gallon jug I was using developed a hole in it, so I was using this rectangular one. I would not recommend though, because as you might see in some of this, it was quite tricky, but I did want to just try and work with whatever tools I had on hand. So this is what I went with. And first you want to fill it up all the way with water. If you can avoid it, try not to have any air bubbles in it like this. I'll show you what to do if you can't get all of the air out of it. And then you want to seal it with your hand really tight so that no water gets out. And then you'll have a Tupperware or a large bin filled with water. You can also fill up your sink all the way with water, works the best and you'll flip it over and get the opening of the bottle under the water before you release your hand. As I showed you here, I have tape and I just marked where it was. That way when I was going back to measure the amount of water that I could displace, I could tell how much air was in the water bottle before I did the experiment. This is me filling up the Tupperware a little bit more because I had to adjust it and you wanna make sure that the mouth of the water bottle stays under the water the entire time because the this being underwater will prevent any of the water in the bottle from moving out. So then I used a straw. You can also use tubing or a bendy straw, um, like a plastic straw. And as long as you have it in there, you take a really deep breath and you blow out in one single breath. Don't breathe in at all during this. You just want to do one big exhale. So as you can see, a lot of water pours out and that's just the air from your lungs pushing out the water from the water bottle. And this is what we want to happen. Just wanna make sure that the opening to the water bottle stays underneath the surface of the water the whole time. And then you'll take the straw out, keeping it underwater the whole time. And then put your hand under it to make a super tight seal and flip it over and voila. And from there, you can measure out the amount of water you have left in your jug, and you can subtract that from the total amount of water you had at the beginning, and that'll give you the amount of air in the jug, which is your lung capacity. And there are some other follow-up questions and activities that are in the document linked in the description that I hope you guys have some fun with. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. I will see you guys next time with the next health science video. Bye!